We're having a busy, noisy afternoon here in the anatomy labs. So I'm squeezing myself into a little space to talk about um, what is the plantar fascia, or what is the plantar aponeurosis? Both of those terms refer to the same thing. Um, we have talked about the muscles in the sole of the foot, the various layers there before, but there's quite a lot of detail, and I think it's worth bringing out the plantar aponeurosis to talk about on its own, because it can be a little bit of a troublesome thing. So, what is the anatomy of the plantar aponeurosis? What is its functions? and uh, what problems does it cause? The lower limb, like much of the body, is surrounded by fascia. Fascia is a, a connective tissue sheet and it gets quite thick in the lower limb, probably because of the size of the muscles, the size of the limb, the forces involved. So fascia is a connected tissue sheet that wraps around, in this case, muscles, helps hold everything together, helps give us shape. It's supportive, it's mostly made up of fibroblasts and type one collagen fibers uh, and what have you. When we get down into the sole of the foot, um, there's a structure down here that runs from the heel to the toes and it's superficial to all of these muscles and it's largely continuous with the fascia that we see elsewhere in the lower limb. So being on the plantar surface of the foot, it gets called plantar fascia. Um, when we actually look at that tissue, um, look at its biomechanics, look at the cells in there, look at how it's made up, it's a bit more like a tendon than a fascia. It's thicker, it's a little bit stretchy, um, and the histology, the cellular and extracellular matrix um, of the plantar aponeurosis is more like a tendon. And an aponeurosis is, is that sort of structure. It's a flat tendon type structure. We have one in the palm of the hand as well. So we tend to call it the plantar aponeurosis, but plantar fascia, plantar aponeurosis are interchangeable terms. It is very strong. It copes with high loads. Um, when we dissect, we take away the skin and some of the other structures here, and then we see the plantar aponeurosis. We can't see it here because it's superficial to these muscles that the model is demonstrating. Um, and we see shiny white fibers running in this direction longitudinally from the, the heel bone, the calcaneus, towards the toes. Um, like most connective tissues, it has a very poor blood supply, um, very poor nervous supply, um, which is probably limited to some of the problems we see here. Now, I've made one <laughs> out of tape. Here's one I made earlier. So, <laughs> so this yellow tape is indicative of the plantar fascia. It is closer to the skin, it is superficial to the muscles. And it's, it's got a bit of tension in it here because there's a pin in the way, but that's, that's kind of representative of its function as well. It's kind of straightish. Um, it is thicker centrally and it runs to the toes. And in fact, it splits into superficial parts and deeper parts. So this plantar aponeurosis will run from the calcaneus. I'll show you the bony bit in a minute, but it'll run and insert into the skin of the toes, but also to the flexor tendons of the toes, these tendons under here. So it is really, really well attached here. There is a transverse metatarsal ligament running across here, which it also blends with and ties everything together. So it's, it's, it's good to think of the plantar aponeurosis as a structure running like this, tying a number of structures together. It also has like a medial part, which is thinner, which runs around to the dorsal fascia and a lateral part, which also runs around to the dorsal fascia. So it does wrap around a bit more than this, this demonstrates here, but this is the, the thickest central part here. And one of its functions then is, well, the sole of the foot goes down against the ground and we have nerves and blood vessels in here. So one of the functions of the plantar aponeurosis is protection, to protect those deeper structures of the foot. If I grab a foot, 
So here are the bones here. Um, this is the calcaneus, the heel bone. This is going to become important later when we talk about function. Uh, so the heel bone, um, the plantar flexors, the muscles of the calf, many of them will insert here and because it sticks out it gives us a mechanical advantage of leverage. And on this side here, so there's the plantar surface of the foot, we can see a couple of lonely bit, uh, lumpy bits. This is the medial, there's the big toe there, this is the medial calcaneal tubercle and that's where the um, plantar aponeurosis is, go is going to run from. Now, more function. So here is a foot, an ankle with lots of ligaments, but not the plantar aponeurosis. These are deeper structures. Um, the foot has a longitudinal arch. Um, and the plantar aponeurosis is helping support that longitudinal arch. And I said it also runs to the toes. So the plantar aponeurosis is somewhat stretchy. When you're walking or running and you, you're in the stance part, the, the stance part of the, of the gait, the stance phase, and you're planting your weight on the foot, um, the toes then get flexed and you move onto the toes to toe off, to push off the ground. Now, because the plantar aponeurosis is running from the calcaneus through to the toes, that means that when you dorsiflex the toes, when the toes are moved like that, the, the plantar aponeurosis is stretched and by putting tension in the plantar aponeurosis, one of the things that happens is that the the longitudinal arch of the foot is raised. Here's my plantar aponeurosis, or an example of. This is probably a little bit too stretchy, actually. But if I flex, if I dorsiflex this joint here, I think you can see the tension building in the plantar aponeurosis, which is what happens with every step when you run or walk. And as you dorsiflex your toe, that tension in the plantar aponeurosis helps raise up this arch. And that arch itself and the structures that form the arch and hold it all together, all those ligaments and muscles and tendons and bits and bobs, are also then storing energy, which can be released when you push off. Is that believable? It's not a great bioengineering demonstration. And then when you move into the, 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 the push off phase, the toe off phase, that stretched plantar aponeurosis can then return some of that energy into the, the plantar flexion of the toes, into that toe off. It's not a lot of energy, but if you walk 20 miles, it all adds up, right? Um, a windlass is, is best known uh, as uh, a method of raising the anchor on a ship or on a boat, in that there is a drum, the um, chain or rope goes over the drum, the drum is rotated and that pulls the rope in and pulls the anchor up. It's adding a bit of complexity to what I'm trying to describe, but that pivoting around this joint here is what is what the windlass mechanism is referring to. It's a mechanical advantage system. Okay, so that's one idea. The next idea that I think is important is, look, here is the calcaneus. So the plantar aponeurosis is going to be running down here. And here is the Achilles tendon, which gastrocnemius and the soleus muscles are going to insert into. Big muscles, big powerful muscles that you can lift your body weight with by plantar flexion. These are mechanically linked through calcaneus. That is, forces generated through here 
pull on the calcaneus. If you pull on the calcaneus, you pull on that plantar aponeurosis, right? Here's that calcaneus there. Sure, we've got an ankle that can dorsiflex and plantar flex, but we've also got lots of slidey roundy joints in here. This is a, a very mobile structure, just like the hand and the wrist are very mobile, so all these joints move around one another. This is not a fixed thing. This is a movable thing that you can change the shape of your foot. So if you pull on the calcaneus, that's also pulling on this end of the plantar aponeurosis, right? Those two are linked. So now we're working towards considering injuries of the plantar aponeurosis. So considering those, that dynamic link through calcaneus, you should think if the plantar aponeurosis is tight, is the Achilles tight or is it a separate thing? Um, okay, so what about problems? What I'm talking about is plantar fasciitis. Here's the plantar aponeurosis. Pain is most commonly felt here, near the attachment site of the calcaneus. Plantar fasciitis seems to be a long-term, non-inflammatory, degenerative condition of the plantar aponeurosis. I said it has a poor blood supply, uh, a poor nervous innervation, and it also is subject to high loads. So it can be damaged by overuse injuries. Um, what we're talking about is micro tears, micro trauma that build up over time. And it's this part here that seems to be the most susceptible to that. Pain is worst first thing in the morning because when you've been led down and asleep, muscles and tendons have shortened. And then as you move around, everything starts to warm up and lengthen a little bit. So those tensional forces are reduced. So the pain is a little bit better. So the question is, has this injury been caused by overuse? Is it being caused by um, tension here? Um, is it being caused by um, a biomechanical imbalance elsewhere. So the plantar aponeurosis is part of the gait cycle. Gait is a complex series of movements. So is a muscle in the hip tight? Is a muscle in the ankle tight? Is the, do you have good ankle flexibility? Are the joints moving? So what I'm saying is, if the other joints in the chain of gait aren't moving freely, aren't moving fully, because muscles have shortened and become tighter, that changes how you load your foot. That changes how you load the plantar aponeurosis. And those loading changes can then, then lead to that long-term degeneration, that micro trauma. So, is the problem here or is the problem further up? Is the problem in your hips or somewhere, right? The other thing that can happen is the calcaneus. The bone can send bony growths, osteophytes, out into or near the plantar aponeurosis where it attaches to the calcaneus, just as it can send bony growths up into the Achilles tendon. Um, so you might see that sort of problem down here as well. But that's the anatomy of the plantar aponeurosis or the plantar fascia. That's where it is. That's what it does. Uh, and that's some of the reasons you might get problems with it. Okay. Um, the plantar aponeurosis. See you next week. Yeah.